Today we're going to be talking about how your depression and unhappiness can be at least partially rightfully justified. You know, some people say that you can think yourself out of unhappiness or depression and in certain ways you can. You can rewire your brain, start thinking more positively and especially if you're a pessimist naturally, a lot of things may be caused just because you're looking at things in a very uh, downer way and you're focused on the negative. Um, but I would like to bring up the point that sometimes it's because your life sucks or it's lacking in certain critical elements that are necessary for happiness. Now we're not talking uh, the glitz and glamour of stuff like fame or money or whatever else. Oftentimes it can be just core integral parts that you're missing that can lead to a more fulfilling, engaging life that you enjoy. So let me give you a great example. There's this man who about a year ago, he posted his story on Reddit and he opened it up to questions and answers. And his life was horrendous and I feel for him. And if I were in his shoes, I know for sure I would start changing and looking for ways of changing my lifestyle immediately. It wasn't a horrible life, but it just illustrates how um, you can have a decent life, but it's still missing something. So this man, he worked a corporate job, nine to five, and he really wasn't engaged in his job. It was office work. And this is how he described his day. And you can almost start to understand where he's coming from. He woke up, then went to work and tolerated his job for eight hours. Then he went home, ate his little frozen dinner, and then tolerated watching TV to escape the dullness of his life until it was late and then he would go to sleep wishing for the day to be over, wishing for him to fall asleep so he can tolerate it until the next day came about. And that was pretty much his life. And he, he opened up his um, story and uh, he was open for questions. And it was just very clear, me reading through that, that his life was not great for a lot of reasons. He didn't like his job. In fact, his whole lifestyle was very unengaging and uh, unfulfilling for him and even his pleasures were really just to tolerate and push him to the next day. Can you imagine living like that for a long time? Just this dullness of just trying to get through to the next day because your current day is nothing great and you don't like it at all. And then the next day comes and it's the same thing and you know you'll do this for eternity. And he remarked about how he was unhappy with his life and depressed and so forth. And you can tell how a simple fix is not going to solve something like this. You know, one thing is not going to just fix everything like this. Sure, there are certain things she, he can start doing immediately in terms of just how he's wiring his brain and um, thinking and perceiving the world without changing anything about his lifestyle that may help. Uh, things I've learned from books like Hardwiring Happiness, where you can start appreciating or enjoying the small things in life that you've taken for granted. That sip of coffee, um, that, that bite into an apple, or the beautiful fresh air, or the scenery, or the sky. And obviously then, you know, there's so many things you can do to start changing your lifestyle physically and your environment to start changing these things. Like finding little things that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis to uh, enjoy your day better. Maybe go out and buy a small treat for yourself. Um, go out and do something exciting or new. But again, these are all just trivial small things and we're not hitting the root of the problem. So let me get to that right now. I just watched on YouTube the comedian Jack Black go to Africa and show us what it's like to be there. And you basically see him going through these horrible places in Africa and he shows us the life of this kid who 
has lost both his parents, has siblings but has never met them, lives in a garbage dump, and survives by picking up food from the trash and selling used water bottles, collecting and selling them back. So his life is a bit of a tragedy and it's also kind of sad because he's very intelligent. You can tell just by talking to him. And all he wants is to have an education so that one day he can maybe make something of his life. And that's his life. And he's on his own at this young age of 11 or 12, doing all that by himself with no parents and just trying to make it by. And basically the charity was for this or the organization that will help these kids get education. And for these types of people, they're just looking for these small things. And uh, the reason I bring up that story is because it shows you one of the key tenets of achieving happiness or helping achieve it, which is being grateful for what you have. And another tenet, which is understanding how unfortunate or uh, fortunate you are in comparison to all these other people. And I remember doing this to myself and reminding myself how because I was lucky enough to be born in the United States of America, as uh, Warren Buffett says all the time, just by the nature of you being born in this country, you won the genetic lottery in so many different ways. Education, economics, um, income, potential, on and on and on. And the, uh, the ability based off the system to create enormous wealth and on and on and on. And... That's great and stuff, and I understand it, and I remind myself of it. But that in itself, even adding that on with educating yourself about all the other places in the world that are less fortunate, that remedy alone, that one thing, will not fix everything. It will not make me completely happy for all eternity. And it goes back to the point of how one small, simple fix is not going to solve your problem. There's bigger issues at hand. And so, in the case of this man, again, let's go back to the man in the office. You can start seeing core things that he's missing. One is probably his job. He's not engaged. He doesn't enjoy it. And he can barely tolerate it. And if he's spending most of his life doing that, that's not going to do well. So he has to start setting plans, moving and working towards and exploring and seeing if he can find things that he can be more engaged and love and like better. Another thing is potentially socially, uh, another huge component of happiness. We are wired to be social creatures. I have the book Social behind me. It's about how uh, social we are as human beings. And obviously he's lacking friends, he's lacking community, he's lacking interactions with other people, he's lacking a lot of these qualities that add to your overall levels of happiness. From charity work to volunteer work to making friends in activities or clubs of interest, whether it's a sports league or um, an improv club, whatever it is, these things can form bonds. And for me, I'm starting to branch out of my comfort zone and actually work to do these things. Like even if you don't think you'll like it, you have to at least test it out. You never know. And even if it's not the best fit and this sport or this hobby is not the most interesting. At least you can make friends, at least you can interact with people, at least you can meet other people, have a great time, and perhaps you can learn to love that. Who knows? So for him, I do think that those are just some core pillars that he can start working on. And obviously there's a bunch of other things he could do, but it's very clear that for him, a lot of the things in his life are just really not adding up. And it goes back to the central message of how um, just because you live in a profitable or more fort fortunate country, it doesn't guarantee your happiness. In fact, if you look at average happiness levels of different countries, the U.S. is not number one. The U.S. is like number 20. And there's so many other countries, many who um, their average income per person is much, much lower 
and they're achieving greater levels of happiness. So this man, this office worker, illustrates how this can occur, you know, um, because of these uh, these things that are not really emphasized in modern society. And there's really no classes in school that really teach you what's really important for happiness. And people get it wrong. People are gravitated, and it's partially due to uh, commercialization, marketing, advertising, big companies, but other factors as well. And so we're gravitated, or we think that we get more happiness from these things like television or making more money or buying that expensive car. And I've seen it time and time again, reading all these stories and biographies of people. Uh, you know, they, they chase these things and they realize that it's not bringing more happiness or it's just uh, like unfulfilling. And in reality, um, I think working towards what really is fulfilling and amazing to you, things like family, friends, community, uh, being social, love, spreading love, um, having the people who you want to love you, love you, and loving them back. All these things can actually add to more long-term levels of happiness. So again, I'm just thinking about all this stuff. And for me, you know, I'm still on my journey to happiness, though I do think I'm progressing in certain ways. And I know there are people who are happier than me and more fulfilled. Um, so let's all work on this journey together. And if you're in that rut, because I do think there are people out there who are in this rut. Some of you may be watching this video. You have to understand, you know, some of these things that you think are good, that you think are awesome, really are not. Television is a great example. There's a study that shows that um, people who watched a certain amount of television, I think it was two or three hours a day, compared to those who didn't, their levels of happiness while watching those television shows and afterwards were much lower than those who didn't. And it's a weird phenomenon. And I read this study from this book. It was another book on happiness. And the point of the message was that um, these things almost disengage us. It makes us lethargic, zombie-like, and especially these sitcoms or uh, TV shows, it's almost, it can put you aside, it can make you feel um, unhappy, especially if you compare yourself to them or uh, you're constantly living in this world. So for me, you know, what I'm doing is I'm cutting out a lot of time spent on YouTube. I spend a lot of time on YouTube just watching entertaining videos from all sorts of channels and that's fun and stuff. But I'm cutting that out. I've cut out television completely. Um, and occasionally I regress. But I'm eliminating that. And for me, I'm starting to move towards things that I think will bring true levels of happiness, fulfillment, engagement, excitement, and fun in my life. So they differ from person to person, I think, because of just how we are. We like different things. So I'm starting to work towards communities of people going to clubs of interest where I can meet people, make friends, uh, socialize, be social, and meet others. Um, I'm starting to discover I'm more of a social person than I thought. And on, on top of that, I'm working on some of my foundational pillars that I already am decent at, but I can work on. One being family, another being loving others, spreading love and kindness, and um, uh, being caring to those who you know, deserve it. Again, if you, I do think that you can't be too nice to people who um, you don't know well enough or uh, may not treat you back the same way. So I'm working on that as well. And I'm working on things that really excite me, really engage me, uh, that are really fun to me. And uh, those things involve reading certain books, doing certain activities, my work, um, my path in life, and also certain things that I really enjoy. I'm starting to really gain the fashion and style. And like it or not, something I really enjoy is um, uh, interacting with beautiful women, preferably on the inside and outside. Um, 
so that's I, I really do get great fun especially um, if I'm around people who have great awesome personalities and I think that's uh, that's something I've started to learn and so for you if you're like me and you like people who have um, awesome personalities and do amazing things and you find a lot of fun just being around them whether it's because they're always so funny or you have a great time around them then you can start working towards that and adding that into your lifestyle rather than just sitting there with your frozen pizza or frozen cut out cardboard or lunch in a box or dinner in a box and eating that and tolerating life so you know we're all on this journey together and uh, let's all work towards it you know a lot of us including myself our lives are kind of boring right now not that interesting and so just realize that you're not alone and especially on the internet you see like all these Instagrams and Facebooks and you it seems like their lives are so amazing sometimes um, and I really caution you to stay away from that and realize that they are highlighting the best moments of their life and that may not even be their life it may not be as exciting as it seems so that's all I got to say and thanks for watching hopefully this video helped let me know in the comments if you have any feedback anything you want to say to me and any advice you want to spread to the community who's watching who's seeking advice so that's all I got to say see you in my next video peace